Hello everyone and welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of SNUSAT Prep, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of the physics section of SNUSAT. So let's start off with this particular question. Suppose the gravitational force varies inversely as the nth power of distance then the time period of a planet in circular orbit of radius r around the sun will be proportional to r raised to n plus 1 over 2, r raised to n minus 1 over 2, r raised to n, or r raised to n minus 2 over 2. So how do we solve this particular question? Well, first of all, we need to write down what's the normal react, what's the normal equation for force. The gravitational force is written as the gravitational universal gravitational constant times the masses of the two objects in question over radius squared. Now that means normally force is inversely proportional to r squared. Now in this particular scenario f dash will be proportional to 1 by r raised to n. So therefore the equation for f dash will turn out to be g lowercase m uppercase m over r raised to n. Now another equation that we'll be using in its general form and we change it for this particular scenario would be that of omega. Omega is the angular time so omega is represented as the under root of gm by r cube. So gm by r cube, all of that under a root would give us the value of omega. Now, um, this is the general equation. So based on the f dash equation that we have, we will be able to find out that omega dash, which is the angular time for this particular scenario, it would turn out to be under root of gm, but instead of r cube, it'll be whatever is r ra whatever is the radius is, uh, condition is plus 1. So um, for r squared, the value of omega would be inversely proportional to the square root of r cube. So similarly, omega dash in this particular scenario would have the its right hand side as under root of gm over r raised to n plus 1. So as you can see, omega dash is proportional to negative r raised to negative n plus 1 over 2. So this is how omega um, is, is, you know, proportional to with radius in the case where f is inversely proportional to 1 by r raised to n. Now, omega, another equation for omega is 2 pi times the time period. So therefore, I mean 2 pi divided by the time period. So therefore, t dash, which is the time period for this particular scenario that we're looking for, would be equal to 2 pi over omega dash. And since we know omega dash is under root of gm over r raised to n plus 1, that means it'll be equal to 2 pi times under root of r raised to n plus 1 over gm. So g, m, and 2 pi are all constants, so therefore over here you can see that the time period is directly proportional to under root of r raised to n plus 1, which is the same thing as t dash being proportional to r raised to n plus 1 
over 2. So therefore, the right answer for the question, the time period in circular orbit of radius r around the sun will be proportional to, will be equal to option A, r raised to n plus 1 over 2. So basically, in this particular question, we will use f equals g m m upon r squared, omega as equal to under root of g m by r cube, and omega as equal to 2 pi over t. So using all of these equations and then substituting the power of r from 2 to whatever power is given in the question, we'll be able to find out the right proportion for the time period. So the time period here is proportional to r raised to n plus 1 over 2. Let's look at another question before we close this out. Two wires are made from the same material and have the same volume. Wire 1 has cross-sectional area A and wire 2 has cross-sectional area 3A. If length of wire 1 increases by delta x on applying a force F, how much force is needed to stretch wire 2 by the same amount? So, since we have a lot of data here, we need to uh, note them down. First of all, it said that two wires are made of the same material. So here, the wires are made of the same material. Now, what does that mean? That means they would have the same Young's modulus. And that's important because we're going to use the Young's modulus in order to find out the answer to this question. In brief, Y or Young's modulus is equal to stress upon strain where stress is force over area and strain is change in length over total length, initial length. So, um, so now we know that both wires have the same Young's modulus because they have the same material. Another important thing is that both wires have the same volume. Now let's find, let's use the different values here. Wire 1 has an area equal to A, wire 2 has an area equal to 3A. And it uses a force F, and for both cases, wire 1 and wire 2, the change in length is delta X. The force here, we don't know. Now let's consider the length of wire 1 is L, then the length of wire 2 has to be equal to L over 3. Now why is that? Both wires have the same volume. So if wire 2 has 3 times the area of wire 1, then it should have one third of the length of wire 1 in order to maintain the same volume. So from here we find out the values of the lengths, the areas, the change in lengths and also the forces that need to be applied. We also know that both wires are made of the same material, so they have the same Young's modulus. Now, for wire 1, the Young's modulus, Y1, will be equal to force upon area over delta X over L. Similarly, for wire 2, the Young's modulus Y2 will be equal to F dash, let's consider that to be the force that we need to find out, over 3 times the original area, divided by delta X, which is the, the change in length, over the length of wire 2, which in this case is L over 3. Now, since Y1 equals Y2, we can easily say that F upon A over delta X over L on the left hand side will be equal to F upon 3A over delta X divided by L by 3. 
So we cancel out F's, we cancel out the A's, the delta X's, and also the L's. So basically what we have, now F's, the F's don't cancel out here because the forces are different. We need to find out the force that needs to be exerted on wire 2. So F's do not cancel out. So the numerator on the left hand side is F, the denominator is 1. The numerator on the right hand side is F dash. The denominator will be 3 times 3 which means the right hand side would be F dash over 9. Now that means F dash or the new force has to be equal to 9 times the original force used on wire 1. So you need to apply 9 times the force applied on wire 1 in order to have the same amount of change of length in wire 2. So therefore the right answer for this particular question is option C. The idea is to use the Young's modulus equation because we found out that the wires are made of the same material and since they have the same volume we can easily find out the length and using the Young's modulus formula we'll be able to find out what is the force that needs to be applied in order to stretch wire 2 by the same amount as wire 1. So that concludes this episode of SNUSAP Prep. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. In order to get the latest updates from our channel, please don't forget to hit the bell icon present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.